Hi, my name is Nick Durant, and I did my Sea Perch project using a retrieval system uh, to be able to retrieve small objects off the tank floor, and here it is in action. Now that you've seen what the sea perch retrieval system does, let's talk about how it works and what's what what's involved in the sea perch retrieval system. So right here we have the switch. The switch just basically gives power to the motor. It is attached through wires and attached to a simple battery. Um, simple, you just push forward and it goes forward and you push back and it goes backwards. Here is the 12 volt DC motor. It is wrapped up in electrical tape and waterproofed. Uh, here's the adapter with the set screw to hold on the, the threaded rod to the shaft while it spins. Um, so when this motor turns, it just turns the, the threaded nut that is made right here and just threads it so it can push forward. Now let's just take that off just so we can uh, see how that works. So when it goes forward, as you can see, this arm has an little a uh, wing we call it that sticks out and hits the guider as it on its way out. When it hits or comes in contact with the guider, it forces the arm to lift up and it just follows the guider and here's an object right here and so it just follows the guider until it falls off um, the path and just and then we're able to pull it back in. Uh, the reason why I made the sea perch retrieval system the way it is is because I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I wanted to make sure I only had one motor doing the movement of in and out. Now with that, that movement wouldn't be able to lift up the arm and so I needed another method, another way to lift this arm up as it was coming out. And so that's why I made these guiders so it can lift up the arm without any other uh, motors or solenoids or step up motors. To, to lift it up and uh, it would just fall due to gravity over the object and that is the main reason why I made it the way I did. Before we actually get into the how to build part of this uh, video, uh, be sure to make all the parts prior um, as directed in my drawings and the paper that, I, that is uh, supplied. Um, all parts are made out of aluminum and uh, so let's, let's introduce the parts here on the table right here. Right here, we have the positioner, or sorry, this is the retrieving arm. This is the arm that will actually retrieve objects, like so. The positioner, this device, will, is attached to the retriever arm to retrieve things. Uh, and it has a little nut that has a uh, thread on it. Uh, we have the guiders. We have the threaded rod, which is right here, and this adapter that's on it right now. It is threaded on the adapter with uh, Loctite, which is a form of super glue. And um, also we have drawer slides right here with the screws. We also need two paper brads right here. Um, we need a 12 volt DC motor uh, with, and here's wire that connects it. Um, this right here is the bottom part of the sea perch. I took the rest off so we can, for easy installment of this device. To install the outer slice of the sea perch, make sure the wheels on the outside and that they go on the inner part of the sea perch, like so. Uh, to put the, the holes, you're just going to dot where the holes align up. Make sure you put one right about here and here uh, for the, from the frame of uh, sea perch and you just want to pre-drill them and then use the screws to secure it to the frame. To install the guiders um, on a sea perch, notice first of all the guiders are bent and make sure that bent is towards the sea perch and that the angled portion of the guiders are facing towards the motor or towards the back of the sea perch. Now when installing these on the seat perch, you're going to put the legs between the drawer slide and the seat perch itself. 
and that's just simply you can either force it in and wedge it in there like that or what you can do is you can unscrew the, the screw right here and put slide in the, the guiders and then re-tighten it and that will give it a good secure fit and they, they are supposed to be a little flexible um, and that's how you secure the guiders. Next we're going to assemble the re actual retrieving arm. So we have the retrieving arm right here, the position and the inner slides uh, and we also have the brass brads. What we're going to do is we're going to thread the brass brad through the holes of the retrieving arm, positioner, and the rails. We're going to put the retrieving arm in the retrieving or the positioner. Then we're going to put the rails on the outside like so. Then we're going to take the brad and we're going to thread all three holes and then secure them all by opening the brad up like so. So now we're going to learn how to solder the switch so that the motor turns one direction when you push forward and reverses the direction when you go back. Um, to do that, um, there's six pins right here on the back, which I'm going to just show right here to easily demonstrate. And how you solder them is you get one wire and you connect these two together, these two endpoints, and then you solder these two ends together. Now these two ends, you, you just need to connect these straight to your motor. This will go to a wire that will connect right to your motor. These will go to your, uh, your battery supply of your plus and minus. And how this works is when the switch is switched up, um, this plus and minus goes through the motor. So this is plus when it's switched up and then this is minus so it completes a circuit going this way and then turns the motor one direction. When the switch is switched down you notice that the negative terminal is now right here and so this is now in the negative side which is the opposite direction making the positive to come in this wire and then come out causing the engine to reverse directions and that's how you solder it. That's the reason why you solder the switch this way. To, uh, put together the entire seat perch and you've soldered your switch and uh, you have your leads, um, make sure your guiders are bent properly. Um, sometimes it will miss the guider altogether and slide right through. You're just going to have to make the proper bends and uh, make sure it does lift up. And when it comes back in, make sure there's enough room for these wings to slide back through. Uh, when you have screws for these uh, drawer slides, make sure those screws aren't sticking out uh, so that it can slide out smoothly without catching on any of the screws. Um, and make sure everything is waterproofed and made out of aluminum so it doesn't rust and uh, there you go.